welcome back class 6 in our online virtual class so today i will be continuing from the chapter north america so i will be discussing regarding central lowlands okay today so let's proceed further so we like we we did many activities in the la in last two class so uh, are you ready to listen the lecture please jot the points very neat and tidy as well as clean handwriting okay let's proceed so today's agenda we will be discussing regarding central lowlands great plains pyrrhus and l william pain so central lowland this is the picture picture of central lowland so this is how central lowland looks like okay central lowland is also called interior lowlands what uh, can you give me the other name of central lowland if question comes you need to write about interior lowlands so it is a flat low lying low lying saucer shaped depression between alpachian mountain in the east rockies in the west canadian shield in the north and atlantic coast in the south so you need to be clear about uh, these locations okay locations so like saucer shaped it is like this okay saucer shaped means this one okay moving forward the central lowlands merge with great great plains which is slightly higher in altitude okay height slightly higher in altitude the major rivers are the major rivers of central lowland will be mississippi missouri and arkansas mississippi missouri and arkansas they flow through central and southern parts they flow to central and southern parts who flows mississippi missouri and arkansas flows towards the central and southern parts so further uh, these central lowlands have plains and these plains are made of of soft, soft sedimentary rocks number 1 point number 2 plains are covered with glacial so plains are covered with glacial sediments and this area which area central lowland is extremely fertile point number 3 means it's very much uh, very good in agriculture activity so much of different crops can be grown so it is very much fertile moving forward this region which region the central lowland is further classified into three things okay that is number one is prairies alluvial plains and greater plains so number one it lies between number one lies between rocky mountains and great lakes rocky mountains and great lakes and this picture is about price okay number 2 is alluvium plain alluvium plains of mississippi and missouri in the center with delta at gulf of mexico so this one is 2 okay that is alluvium plains and number 3 is great plains to the west which is at the slightly higher elevation great plains is this one this is the image number 1 image number 2 and image number 3 respectively okay so by seeing image also you can make out which is what okay so the major rivers we are talking about rivers of central lowland major rivers in north america originates in western cordilleras and the alpachian and flows towards the central lowlands some rivers flows towards the coast of pacific and atlantic from cordilleras and alpachian respectively so these are the rivers okay you need to write or write the names of these rivers which flows from where the north flowing rivers are mackenzie and churchill and this river drains towards arctic sea 
and Hudson Bay. Okay, this Mackenzie and Churchill River drains to Arctic Seas and Hudson Bay and River Mississippi. We are talking about the river Mississippi is most voluminous in North America. Means it is very huge and very like water volume is water volume is very huge. So Mrs. River Mississippi is voluminous river in North America. So these major rivers are mostly utilized for <coughs> irrigation purpose, inland navigation fresh water fishing and generation of hydroelectric power so these are the uh, rivers which are utilized utilized for different purposes okay so i guess you are clear up to here now the other topic is the great lakes uh, the great lakes is a unique and spectacular spectacular group of glacial lakes which are found along the boundary of usa and canada so i have put images also in subsequent slide i will make you understand okay these are the great lakes made of of five lakes okay great lakes has different five lakes okay namely lake superior uh, lake huron lake michigan lake ontario and lake erie so the acronym means with the combination with the first letter combination of first letter it has made two homes acronym of this five great lakes are homes homes means it comes to huron okay o means ontario m means michigan e means erie and s means superior okay so i guess you are clear with the acronyms understood now moving forward these freshwater lakes are interconnected with each other and st louis waterways so st lawrence uh lawrence i'm sorry st lawrence river is there and they are interconnected okay look here are lake superior in lake superior lake huron lake michigan lake erie and lake ontario homes the acronym of lakes it's out here okay they together account for 20 percent of total fresh water content in the earth so these together okay um, these five lakes total gives 20 percentage 20 percentage of fresh water so further the niagara falls formed in 2000 years ago is years ago is niagara is in niagara river so niagara falls is here okay upper niagara river is here and lower niagara is here so these one this niagara river has been formed 2000 years ago years ago okay so then these these uh river like which drained into lake erie first it will drain out lake erie and all to lake ontario this niagara river will first uh, drain to lake erie and lake ontario so this is niagara falls like it is a very beautiful okay beautiful falls in the world and it it attracts lots of tourists people pay people pay huge amount of money to visit this place okay and out here you can see there are different stairs are here and different small small peoples are also out here so uh, the image is quite blurry please bear with it so i guess you are clear with niagara falls now so uh, i have already completed uh, the central lowlands next topic of our chapter will be understanding case study so case study it will be like it is very different methods of study okay different methods of study when you reach higher classes when you reach at college level or master's level uh, what happens is that you need to study about different incidents incidents that happens around the globe so case studies study about something you need to study about something that is that has happened okay 
and similarly in this north american chapter we need to understand what is lumbering in lumbering in canada okay lumbering in canada we will study about the case study of lumbering in canada so uh, till now my students have done their work very extraordinary so by seeing your work i'm so much happy and this is the quotation i want to dedicate to my students is this the mind is just like a muscle the more you exercise it the stronger it gets and the and the more it can expand so in lockdown period my students are learning different methods and they are cooperating with uh, teachers also and they are learning new ways and new activities to learn new things so please grow like this and please never stop learning so thank you and uh a day okay or uh, have a great day means that the day is already passed though but uh hope you have learned something in this day so till then stay safe and take care do your work complete your notes on time take care